the game when they lost three nil, and uh, they were doing very well until the goalkeeper got injured and uh, had to come off, and they scored directly from the corner. And uh, I think three nil flattered Trinity. So I thought UV were quite impressive. I was quite pleased with them. So the action underway, and UBC pressing right away. UBC uh, looking at them on paper, a fairly small squad, a very pacey squad. See if UFV is up to that task this evening. I think physically UFV are the biggest, stronger team, but uh, technically UBC always have good players, at, uh, which is right at UBC, so it's a great location for them, and it makes yeah. common sense. So they get a good choice of the best players around, and it's a bit of an advantage for them. But UFV, uh, I'm sure they'll use the physical side tonight and uh, the aerial power as well up front. Yeah, certainly a lot different conditions from the last game we called. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was absolutely chucking it down. It was going sideways, the rain. It was <laughs> one of the worst nights I've ever been in a game, to be quite honest. But uh, credit to both teams, you, Vic, and UFV. They played really well and battled through the conditions. So what can we expect here differently tonight? A beautiful evening and a different surface as well that UFV played on that first. Because that's all the train and play on. But grass is a bit more forgiving. It's, uh, it's, it's a better game on grass. Strong play towards the middle. Can the Cascades keep any sort of possession? Unable to, and it's going to go out for a Thunderbirds throw in. Yeah, both teams feeling themselves out. Um, again, I, I think it, the possession game will be more of a UBC game, and I think looking at UAV, they'll look to play more on the break and try and expose UBC when they get more players forward. Cascades with a little bit of possession. Can they hold on to it? A lot of furious action for these loose balls in the middle of the field to start here. Looking to switch the field there. A lot of room on this far side. Could have utilized it, but the UBC did well to jump in and stop that. Yeah, UBC closed down very quick. It, it, it makes the options a lot harder. There's, there's less to play, but I thought he could have come around the back a bit there and kept possession. Heavy tackle there and game than you see in, in some other leagues where it's a lot more possession and pretty play but here it's very very competitive and uh, all the teams in the league uh, compete very well and it's a physical game yeah certainly has been a physical start and all the coaches have talked preseason and during this season you know 10 seasons they've done very well but on, on any day any team can win it's uh, it's it's pretty close and what you would call the weaker teams who have not been as dominant over the years, they're getting stronger and stronger. So it's, it's getting to be a, a much tougher league and a better league, in all honesty. High tide rises all ships. Every team getting better with that competition. Neither team able to grab too much of a lengthy possession here early. Cascades trying to keep a little bit of possession here now for themselves. Work back to the keeper. That's going to be Jackson Cox in the net tonight. It's good to see David Parford back in, in shape again. He had a bit of a pull, a muscle pull, and missed the Trinity uh, games, but it uh, looks like he's playing in midfield again tonight. Long ball played over the top. Can the Cascades get a fortunate bounce? They can't. UBC does well to keep that to the corner, but the... Oh, oh bit of a, a goal kick. Actually, I was just going to comment. That was really good defending yeah. by the UFV player, not diving in, doing all the right things. And that looked like a corner to me. But yeah, the, it certainly did. The assistant referee's in a better position than we are, but uh, um, we'll have to trust his, uh, his, his eyes. <coughs> a lot of communication moving up the pitch as the Thunderbirds try to pick out their attack. Well done to chest that one down. It does go out of play, but Rangi was all over that one. Lines on the field. I believe there's probably a football game on, on Rotary Stadium tomorrow. That's why they've got all these white lines on. But it's a bit confusing near the penalty area where <laughs> yeah. there's another line right outside. And the players will have to be, the goalkeepers in particular, will have to be very well aware of that. Yeah, that is a, a little part of the game that you might not think about. But certainly can be confusing along the side as well with two, with two lines. The pitch being a couple of yards wider than a football field. UBC with a through ball trying to find something, but well done to narrow his man away from the ball. Aggressive play at the back there on that one. Referee.
one of the two UBC players above this free kick. Looks like he... No, he won't be the one. It'll be swung in by the left. He got on it by the back post. Still very early in this game, but... Nikogi seems like he's going to be trouble on that far side, showing a lot of pace. He's a big physical player as well. Good play there to switch the field, but focused a little too much on trying to keep it from going out of play and not so much on where the ball was heading. Just UBC give, on the counter now. They're just giving the ball a little, giving the ball away a little bit too easily for my liking, UFV. They need to have a bit of patience, make sure the passes are nice and crisp, get them on target to the player passing to. And I think credit to UBC as well is they are pressurizing very well. They're, they're, playing, they're, they're, they're pushing on very high up the field and pressurizing anywhere where the ball is. And the only way around that is to pass it quick and make, make sure your passes are good. Cascades with a chance developing and it's a shot tried from far out, nothing doing. But yeah, he's a little bit ambitious for that shot, I think. It wasn't much space there, but... But no, in my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad shot, as long as they're good. Some are better than others, but that one... Uh, I think you need to have a look at that one again and maybe have a different decision. Yeah, certainly nothing wrong with trying a few on goal, but I'd like to put a little more menacing attack on it. It looks like UFV have shaped up with a four back four, two holding midfield players, three players in front of there, and a one guy up front to hold it up. So it's a four, two, three, one. And we've used that when I was coaching against UBC and what they're looking to do there is absorb the pressure that UBC may be pushing on them and try and look to get in behind as quickly as they can on the break and uh, as soon as they get possession, hit the front man, hold it up and get the three players that are in behind him up quick and catch them on the break. But they need to keep possession to do that and just lumping it up feet anywhere makes it more difficult. Just give the ball away a lot. Certainly be watching for that as the game progresses. Ball's going to stay with the Cascades here. Or is it? No, the referee switches his arm as he sees the side official with his arm pointed Thunderbirds ball. Does end up back with the Cascades regardless. Unable to keep it in though as the pressure came on a little bit. A little bit sloppy at the back there. There's a lot of communication. They did half time to get that sorted out. Opting for a short throw here. Trying to keep possession. Good couple of quick passes. Working out of trouble and switching the field now as the Thunderbirds. Good job using the whole width of the pitch. A little bit of room down this far side. It's well done by Manila to stop that. And can the Cascades find something going the other way now? No, just not quite enough urgency getting to that ball. And again, I think UBC just a little bit quicker and a bit sharper to get to the ball and win it back quickly. Too big of a touch and possession almost lost, but the Thunderbirds able to gaddle, battle for it back. Good pressure there, but the Thunderbirds able to maintain possession. Quick little passes throughout the middle of the field, utilizing all their space well and trying to move up some space up the field now. Lee plays it back and heads to the middle. Creates a little bit of space down the side. Good quick touches in a succession there, but it finally comes to an end and the possession ends in nothing. Good movement by the UBC players, but it's again, it's the quality of passing that's letting them down a little bit. You know, they, they give the ball away far too easily. All I need to do is a simple pass and keep possession. But it's always very easy from the uh, broadcaster's booth here. We don't make <laughs> any mistakes playing here. No. That is for sure. We're sitting way on top of the, the roof at Rotary Stadium. What a great view of the game. Yeah, great vantage point up here to see the Cascades try and grab their first win of the season. Battling a tough UBC squad here tonight. Looking to keep a run of great play going. Great turn there to shield the ball and create some space. Can he find anything down the middle? He can. One more pass to the outside, but it's a little far. Still a chance to get it in. It is crossed in, but no danger in the end. 
quite a good build up from UFV there, getting down the left side and trying to get across in the cross. The quality is just not good enough to uh, cause any real danger, but it's the right idea. And uh, good to see that when the cross was coming in, there's at least two of the UFV players trying to get in the box and get something out of it. But uh, it has to be better quality crosses going in. Good to make the UFV keeper Bennett McKay work a little bit here in the early stages of this first half. UBC with it on that far side, losing possession, and here come the Cascades. Some room in the middle, but UBC putting the pressure on, not allowing that outlet pass to come in. I don't know if both teams are a little bit nervous. Yeah, there certainly hasn't been the crispiness to this game at the start. Neither team really finding that extra push. Both teams kind of feeling each other out here in these early stages. Um, the, the viewers will have to excuse us uh, if we don't get all the names correct. The, the hoops and the number in between and being so far away on top of the roof here, it's difficult to see. Uh, the UBC numbers are fine and uh, it's, it's, it's tough for us when we yeah. don't know the players as well as we know the U of V players, but we'll do our best to get some of the names right for you. Good call to get those excuses out in the open early. <laughs> And the linesman called that as a free kick, and the referees have been a coach. So it's the lefty coming in with the in swinger, looking for something at the back post. Bit of an unfortunate bounce there. It didn't end up being too much danger. He had pressure coming on, had to hit it first time. But a dangerous area to be allowing UBC to have those kind of chances. Some good quick touches by UFV to work it out of their own end. Pressure coming on from the Thunderbirds a little bit now. UFV moving around trying to find that outlet pass. Unfortunate kind of off of the Actually a good ball from there. Donald up to the front player. And the front players have to hold the ball up. That's their job. And people, you know, they think, what's a forward job? It's to score goals. In my opinion, a forward's job is to hold the ball up and bring other people into the game and let the midfield players get up and join in. And he's not done that. they've not done that tonight. They've not held the ball up very well. Slip from on the end of things and get them knocked away, but uh, the delivery is so important here. Let's see what they get. We are seeing those big bodies up in the 18. Good ball in. Unable to meet it at the top was a Cascades player. And UBC works it out of trouble. Yeah, and a silly foul to give away there. You want to just, if he turns, get a tackle in, but getting a little bit too tight there and a bit ambitious and giving a silly foul away, give possession away. Yeah, a little bit of frustration perhaps after the free kick didn't go as planned worked out the side by Ranji for a throw in here in their own defensive third UBC with lots of time to pick out a pass here and get their attack moving forward yeah they've switched the ball very well there they've uh, just kept possession, come around the back there, played it into a good player. Actually, the, the strikers held the ball up quite well there and kept possession. But uh, again, another sloppy pass to give the ball away to UFV throw. Yeah, that was well done by Fussell to win that in the air. Just out of the reach, though, of his winger. That ball's going to stay with the Cascades. So they work it up the field. The captain, Donald to throw this one in. Boy, he was sure impressive the last time we called the game. I thought he played very well at Trinity as well. He's uh, obviously a ex more experienced player. This in his fifth year. But uh, good player, makes good decisions, neat and tidy on the ball, good defender. And he certainly leads the way with his intensity out there. Parfit with a foul there, an unnecessary one. He's a little bit too upright. You've got to get in, look at the ball, get low, don't dive in. Famous three words I used to say very, very often, don't dive in, stay on your feet. Thunderbirds looking to create something up the middle. Heavy tackle, will the referee let it go? He won't. Tried to play the advantage, but Cascade... In with the tackle, again, I, I didn't think it was such a bad tackle. I think he's won the ball, and they're going to get the game stopped, these referees, if you don't allow slight <laughs> tackles, or as long as they get the ball, there was no intent, no malice. I don't think it was much of a foul, to be honest with you. 
game's going soft. Certainly could have gone either way. The referee choosing to stop the play. UBC working around possession. Can they find a hole in the UFV back line? They haven't been able to do it yet. Here's a dangerous ball played through, but well done on the slide to get that out of harm's way. I believe that was Spies getting in there. Well, there's 20 minutes. Uh, there's been the odd free kick into the box, but there's mm -hmm. nobody really created any scoring opportunities. So let's hope we can uh, see some of that happening more often. Both sides, as long as we get a good game. But they need to, need to create a little bit more, both teams. Good couple of touches to create some space, but it ends in a Cascades counterattack. Can they pick out the right play here? Good move back to the middle. Manela ends up taking a bit of a lunge towards that ball after taking it too big of a touch to the middle. See, as I was saying before, Dom, that the, the way U of V have set up to play with the 4-2-3-1, right. when they get a chance to break like that, you've got to get players forward quickly. And I thought there was too many players sitting right. back and getting holding and being a bit sort of, you know, defensive-minded rather than get forward. The more you get forward, the more chance you've got. Certainly there was some difficult ball to the back corner. Looked like he might almost juggle it for a minute, but Jackson Cox does well to stay with that one. And yeah, like you were saying, there was not much going on in front of him. He had to just kind of keep pace while he waited for players to come behind him, but no teammates came to his aid there. Unlucky pass there. Sloppy turnover and the Cascades reap the rewards of that one. Yeah, I think it's Mitch Perot there with the sloppy ball out and got to keep possession. Good move to the outside and unlucky to have that one off of his legs from the defender's tackle. Going to be Thunderbirds. A lot of a midfield battle and uh, not a lot of action. We'll see who can really grab control of this middle of the field. It's been a lot of back and forth. And again, another turnover in the middle of the field. Can the Cascades pick out a pass here? Kind of forced to the middle. And again, oh, here's in. this one's good, though. And a chance at the back door. And, oh, he tried to go back across to that far post. Well, I think uh, the player who made the final pass, half a shot you take, half a chance you take it. And they're looking to set it up to be a perfect shot and goal. Get a touch, get a half a chance, and get it stuck in the back of the net. He should have had a shot there rather than pass it. Pass the responsibility. Yeah, he passed up in that danger opportunity, but boy, did it end in a great chance on the other end. Couldn't quite pick his spot. And you'd like to think that when you're in alone, you'd like to at least challenge the keeper there. Well, I think even when you get when the player's sort of half blocking the goal, do you shoot or do you pass? And I always tell my players, shoot, because then you, yeah. might, you might get a good shot and goal, or you might even get a deflection, which is going to make it harder for the goalkeeper. Right. But if you don't take the opportunity... Every opportunity you don't take, you're guaranteed not to score. That's exactly right. Header, one in the air. Offside. Briar was in an offside position there, just barely, as the header was flipped on towards him. Thunderbirds trying to get a little bit of possession going on their own, but they turn it over once again. Yeah, he would have... Player started to, Nikogi started to flail a little bit there. Once he lost possession, you could feel there might be a foul coming. Seems to be a lot of space for the players. The, the, the game's really quite wide, and there's lots of space to get the ball under control, but uh, they still keep giving it away. There's lots of space to make good passes, and uh, it's just got to be a little bit more neat and tidy from both teams. That's not just for UAV, that's from both teams, UBC too. They've given us a lot of balls away, unnecessary, unforced errors. Yeah, that has certainly been the theme early. An aggressive tackle in there again. That one's clean. Off a of UBC body and here for a Cascades throw. Tried a quick little flick, but yeah, I think the you've defender got to hold that up. Just got to hold that up and let the other players come and support you. Trying to flick it and turn with the ball is the time to give it away. Hold it, keep it, give it to this midfield player supporting, spin off and get in the box. A little bit of action down in the corner. Looks like he was forced out by the 
UBC defender well done there to win his team the throw. Ball played again, sloppily to the middle, and another turnover. Can the Cascades move it upfield? Oh, that's just And again, it a looks like one. UFV have changed the formation a little bit. Donald, who's normally the right fullback, is playing at left back. Right. And uh, I don't know whether that's a tactical move to pick out one of the UBC players that they may see as a threat. But it's certainly different to the other games I've seen him play where he's done very well at right back. Shows the versatility of his abilities. Very well could be to try and mitigate Nakogi on that outside. He's looked like a very dangerous player so far. Cascades trying to work one over the top. A lot of room on that far side. Just can't quite find the foot of him though. You often say the game's a game of mistakes and the team that made the most mistakes mm -hmm. normally get beat. And there's certainly a mistake. Listen, a bit of rain today. And sometimes the turf can be a bit, uh, a bit less forgiving and you can slip around and what have you. But it seems okay, but the players seem to be giving the ball away a lot easier than they should be. Cascades player running into the official in the middle of the field there as some space is created for a UBC shot. That's Taylor Richardson still down in the middle. Certainly not happy with the official after having just run into him. Cascades over the top. Quick little touch. Can Manila get in? Manila with a long touch to the outside. He bodies his opponent, but can't quite get that outside edge. Actually, good defending by the UBC fullback there. He's just kept on his feet, concentrated, looked at the ball, kept going, and did a really good job to squash that chance. Yeah, it had looked for a moment like Manila might have been able to use that big frame to edge him out and get that outside with real power move. Throw something long into the box. And it comes from Manila. Going to opt for the short one. In comes a ball, a decent chance. Too close to the keeper in the end. Again, my opinion on that, the ball coming in from so deep is the goalkeeper's ball and the centre-back's ball. You've got to get the ball to the goal line and pull it back. So at least right. they're going to get turned and they've got to turn their head and see the man they're marking or where the ball is. And it's much more difficult to defend against. But diagonal balls in from deep, deep positions, I think, is the defenders of the goalkeeper's ball. Yeah, McKay certainly never looked troubled on that one. As a little bit of space opens up here for Nikogi. Plays it to the outside. Nikogi makes a run down to the corner. Opens up some space in the middle. Well taken shot there. Chung had it blocked, however. Good positioning by the... UFV defenders. A little bit of pressure on now here at the back. Should do with time and space here now on this near side. Turns it back and a lot of these plays are well, I think making the fans a bit the anxious. And, uh, they're making a tough job of it. it. It's not as comfortable as it looks here. They, they're trying to play around and pass it and draw UBC in but They've got to make good decisions and good passes. Sidhu with a lot of room here on this near side again. Picks out a pass and gets it right back. Thunderbirds pressure coming on here. Finally the Cascades elect to get it way out. Can they get something going here now? Quick touch to the middle and a hit. Right at the keeper in the it's end. Okay, that's a shot. I mean, again, if it, if, you know, it's not a hardest shot in the world, but it's on target. So credit where it's due. But they need to get a good strike on that and really give the goalkeeper some work to do. Certainly hasn't been that menacing threat of an attack yet, but... Another slip by UBC player there. It might be a bit slick out there with a the night time yeah, there has been a... on the field, but uh, they should be wearing the right footwear as well. We used to always play on grass, and all the, all the centre-backs and the full-backs had to wear screwing studs. We wouldn't right. allow them to wear multi-studs. These days they wear slippers, so no yeah. wonder they're falling over. Not the uh, two Thunderbirds over top of this one. It's going to be the in-swinger. In a dangerous area. Well won by the Cascades. Good chance for UBC that. I think UFV was sitting really deep inside their own box. I would have had them pushed out on the, on the penalty area line, on the 18-yard line. And uh, UBC took advantage of that. Good delivery into the box and uh, a good chance. Just needs somebody to get on the end of it. Yeah, do you feel like just come Get right. it, and he's got that space to come, and he screams keeper and scares everybody to death by shouting at them. And he comes and gets it, but the further you get back on the goalkeeper, he's indecisive. Does he come, does he not? 
and it makes it easier for the attacking players to get something out of that and get knockdowns and and uh, again from where it is going in it should be a defender's ball because they can see everything easy it's got to be played in behind them oh that's going to be oh. a foul referee oh my goodness the uh, referee was in a tough position there kind of right behind the play but certainly from our vantage point it looked like the UBC defender was better position than we always closer but it looked like a foul to from there uh, from up here yeah, the side judge was more of a view from this side that, like we had, but didn't see any harm in it. But it seems it's always that way that the UFV player showing a little bit of frustration after the missed call. They, they always get the second one. Good play there to create a little bit of space, but nothing doing on the end pass. UBC are doing very well at switching the play around the back. You know, they, they, they definitely, when they get possession, the full-back positions, they look to switch it and get the play and get the other team coming across. And again, uh, they played very well at that tonight. Good turn and keeps possession for the Cascades. Played to the outside. Can they move something upfield? Good little Meg there to beat his defender. That one gets the bench going and taken out from behind. Good call by the referee there. That's a foul. Yeah, the more difficult it is for the players to make decisions and they've got to be better defenders to not give fouls away. Ball played into the 18. Can the Cascades get a bounce? Kick like that. You've got to look along the line and make sure you're okay. And If anything, when you're running towards the ball, you make a run backwards a little arc so you're onside and come and attack it, but there's no excuse for being offside there. Well, it is tough to see after the free kick was won by a nutmeg of a defender by Donald to get open and boy if you're going to nutmeg your defender if there's one place you want to do it's in front of your bench the Cascades bench was certainly letting the Thunderbirds player hear it after that one chance on now for the Cascades can they get the pace to find it they can't quite well done by the UBC defender to stave him off and it's ends actually, up winning a goal kick in the end it's a decent chance for you uh, UFV that I mean when you've got the UBC defenders turning the face facing their own goal that's what you want to have but they've dealt with it quite well, UBC. They've got some good experience on the team and uh, they've done very well tonight. They're, they're, they're a hard team to break down. They're very good defensively. Just over 10 minutes remaining in this first half of Canada West TV action presented by Co-op. Can either team in these closing minutes really grab the momentum heading into half? Well, I've always said this, that most goals, in my opinion, or a lot of goals are scored in the last five minutes of each half. When players get complacent, they're maybe a little bit tired, and chances come, you know, come fast and furious. So let's see what happens in this one. Can the Cascades keep possession and work something towards the middle? This is the danger area they want to be in. Almost out for a corner, but it is going to be another throw. Yeah, you just got to be a little bit more street smart there and just play it off and try and get a corner. They're just, you know, they... They're a bit naive, some of the players. Just knock it off his feet, get a corner, get ready for the cross. Certainly a lot tougher to work off the throw-in, and you see there, putting a bit of a tough position off the throw, tries to work it around. Can't get past his defender out for a goal kick. With all fairness, there's, there's not a lot between the two teams in the first half. They've, uh, they've both uh, had as much possession as you. other. We don't have the stats on exactly how many passes or how long, who's got the most possession. But it, it seems to have been fairly even. The thing that's lacking in the game is chances and creativity. Both sides. Good chance down the outside is the most dangerous UBC player statistically on the season, just barely. The only Thunderbird with multiple goals on the season with two is Sebastian Zikowski. UBC working a little bit of possession now. Taking their time, waiting for UFV to take shape so they can attack. Nothing doing for UFV in the middle, keeping a good shape. UBC quite content to keep possession, not give the ball away. And looking to change the play, goalkeeper joining in, which is good to see. And again, changing the play and sloppy from the the centre back and That's let it go out. It's just sloppy play. I'm sure Mike Marshall will be tearing his head out with that. 
No need for that. That's a foul. Good call, and that's a foul and a to Spice, who's going to line up behind this one and curl it in with his dominant foot. It's a good low ball in. Out of danger that's by UBC. It's not a good enough ball in. The ball has to be behind their last defender and get them turned. It can't be played where they can head it out because that can cause problems when they can get out quick and come at you. It's just got to be a better delivery than that. A lot of confidence from the keeper there making the forward miss. That's going to get the fans in his own bench going, certainly as Donald puts it through the legs of his defender as well. Yeah, a bit of Bruce Groblow there, the goalkeeper used to have at the White Caps. <laughs> he used to do that a bit and give you more grey hair, but uh, he was a good goalkeeper, Bruce, so I think he's obviously seen him play and taken I like a few that, advantages. Uh, I like that no call from the official there on Sedu who came out the back and you could tell from our vantage point the play happening kind of right in front of our booth that the player did kind of jerk forward. Good job by the referee to snuff that out. We don't have any information in the booth as to who the referee and the assistants are, but They've been fairly consistent, quite pleased with them. Not very often I'm pleased with referees and, <laughs> and assistants. They normally cost you the game, but uh, no, they've done well tonight. Good slide there, but Balk stays with the Cascades. Good turn there and a potential foul committed. No, the ref's hand did stay oh down. Wow, goodness. what That's... a strike out of nowhere from distance. I'll tell you, the referee has to be commended for that because it in. But that's right. been the best chance of the game by far in the last five minutes of the game. Yeah, that chance. That's got to give them some encouragement, that. That chance snuck up. I almost didn't see the shot because, like you said, I was looking back at the referee to see if he made the call or not. Great call by him to keep that hand down, let the Cascades play the advantage. And, boy, that had to have been 25 yards out. That was a shot from distance, but a well, absolute that's been cracker. The best, that's been the best shot of the game. What a good strike, good technique. He's hit it well. The only thing is it's about six inches too high and hit the top of the crossbar on, on the corner of the post. But what a good shot. And that's the best part of the game up to now. Won't come much closer. Cascades will be discouraged that they weren't able to capitalize. But I'm sure pleased that they've... UMV could be one up. They, they, they look, they've had the better chances, obviously, the one they've just had. There's not many chances. But uh, they've done very well this half. Not much remaining now before half. We'll see if either team is able to get any more good chances. Ball taken down well. Cascade's able to keep possession. <sighs> Trying to make one extra man move. Great steal. UBC player going down early there right in front of the, or easy rather, right in front of the referee who wasn't buying any of what the player was trying to sell on that one. Yeah, the player's obviously hurt then. Well done, the UFV player, putting the ball up. Be giving this ball back to UFV. Yeah, and again, and they two do. sporting teams. Yeah, nice to see. Losing 1-0 the last five minutes, I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sportsmanship changes a little when there's those factors in play. Played out to the outside. Do the Cascades have one more rush up the pitch in them this half? They are trying one over the top. It's a decent effort, but that's just too long of the ball being in the air for the defender to plan out that one. I think, again, the straight ball's out of the back, and it's a defender's ball. What you've got to do is play diagonal balls, and you want to get them sort of... should be a, di a diagonal ball to get more out of it. Cascades end up with possession. And are going to keep it for one more throw here. So they inch their way closer... This is the time where the players where that throw in should be taking place. Looking to get a long one in towards the box. Something in a danger area. Still bouncing around. It's still to be won. Cascades come out with it. Good job by the UBC defender there not to overcommit. Ball still up for grabs. Jeez, it was available. Nice. What a lovely night for the game. It's absolutely perfect conditions. You know, it's not cold. It's not too hot. Beautiful night for the game. It truly is. So, just under three minutes to go here until the halftime whistle. 
Does either team have one last chance in them here? Cascades hoping it's them. Keeping possession off these throws as of late down that far side. Can he change that here? Short throwing back to Donald. Well done to keep possession. Just not able to string any passes in a row together. As UBC's done well to jump in. Yeah, they're very well organized UBC. They've, uh, you know, they, they've kept possession trying to play out from the back. But when it needed to be defended, they've defended very, very well. That ball up for grabs and ends in the middle with a UFV player. One touch to the outside and passed off. Taken down just outside the box. Cascades yelling for a foul. They aren't going to get it here. Well done to play on by the referee, I think, there. He certainly had lots of reactions from players forcing him to make decisions. Ed. And uh, we had to play well to do that. We couldn't just turn up and stroll around. We had to work hard to get that. And we did that. Certainly one of the teams is going to have to work very hard tonight to find a winner. Does UBC have something in them before the half? No, but the Cascades might. Uh, not this half. And uh, try and create more chances. Play balls into dangerous areas. Get crosses in. And uh, cause as many problems as they can. And we're off. And before we get too far into the second half, I know you wanted to say a couple words regarding UBC's coach, Mike Mosher. Yeah, Mike Mosher, I, I coached him uh, a long time ago with the Canada team when we played in Guatemala. But I'd just like to make a mention about his dad, Dick Mosher, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year. And uh, Dick was the head coach of the men's soccer team for many years and also the women's soccer team at UBC and won championships with both teams. A very, very successful coach, probably the most successful coach at UBC. And, but not only that, what a wonderful guy, what a real nice guy he was, always had time for Quite a few yellow cards up to now, and really it's not that been that much of a dirty game, but a uh, few yellow cards nonetheless. Cheeky little ball played in and headed on to the back post, still there. And it's Certainly. out for the goal kick. Good delivery, good ball in the box. Uh, the header wasn't the greatest. He's trying to flick it over there, and uh, not really any threat, but uh, the overhead kick wasted really because it's out of play. Neat little flick on by the Thunderbirds, but just out of the reach of the winger down that side. Out for a throw. We can't hear from up here because it's, it's so far away. But Kalks has certainly showed confidence when he's had the play, ball played back to him here this evening. Can certainly handle the ball. UBC trying to get a little something going with possession here now. Well played over crossing fields. Bit of a dangerous ball played in. Dangerous idea anyways, but it was and never too far uh, out of the Cascades' reach. Given a, free, given a throw in to UBC. I'm trying to look and see if they've made any. You didn't see any action there. So uh, I would imagine, hopefully, they've, they've just kept the same two teams at the start of the game. I am seeing a... A couple on this near side, 24 and 7. That's Farman Min Parman Minhas and uh, Will Bundy that have entered the game for the Cascades here on this near side. So a couple of changes for the Cascades. Everything looks to be the same on that far side. Sandu gets up for a header. Gets in aggressively to win that tackle and keep possession for the Cascades. Can they do something with it now? Uh, Parfit's done well there to keep possession under a lot of pressure there and his pass could have been a little bit better. He just played it over the top, but he could have maybe kept the possession a bit easier. But uh, very good at protecting the ball there and just holding on to it and not letting the UBC player get close to him. Oh, and another foul. Aggressive tackle yeah. coming in there. I don't think Tom Lounge is too happy with Certainly some hard tackles. Looping in. Never a problem, though, for... Uh, the goalkeeper's done very okay. well there, coming out and making easy job of, uh, really, a routine save for him there to get a hold of it. But not a lot of challenge on him. The ball was a bit too deep, too near the goalkeeper. Delivery wasn't bad, but it's got to be just in between the six-yard and the penalty spot where players can get in. The goalkeeper might be a bit hesitant to come out. But uh, it's easy to say that. When you're playing on there, it's a lot harder to do it. 
John Juan Choi getting a touch in here. That's uh, a UBC halftime substitute. Actually, good defending there. He's looked to have a little bit of a little quick turn and nick the ball past him, and it's, it's very dangerous, but the defender's in such a good position, he's had no trouble dealing with that. That's a foul. Yeah. And pardon me, I was looking at the wrong team for the Thunderbirds. That got a couple of touches in there, want to throw for his team, uh, the halftime substitute. Cascades another, unable to win possession. Looks like the referee and he has to call yeah. that back. Another 50-50 challenge. Both teams look a little bit guilty of both doing the same thing, but uh, the referee's on the spot and call it the right way. Yeah, he's played his uh, advantages very well this evening, knowing when, when to let the game go on, when to call it back. Ball one by the Cascades on that far side for a throw. Tried to play a little looper over the top. Looked like he played it off himself. Cascades get possession and a dangerous little ball played down the side, but that's great play pace showed by Anthony Vega. Yeah, Vega's done well getting back to deal with that, but the pass could have been a little bit better, but he's done really well getting back. His he's, uh, positional sense is very good. And pardon me again, that's Farmer just a little uh, confused as the team switch sides was still looking on the... The wrong side, but that was Farmer number five. He's been very solid on the back end for UBC. Chance here for the Cascades. Good touch. Plays a little ball through, and it wasn't quite in the right spot. Uh, I think Again, maybe a case of passing it off rather than taking a chance in that opportunity. Yeah, I think he's going to have a shot there. He's going to take a chance. And he Only a two-man wall. A little bit out, though, still. Likely trying to play something towards that back post. He does have a go. Not a bad effort for that close post, but in the end, he blows it. Players, and, and I've tried to help players over the years I've been coaching, is they try and shoot and hit the top corners as often as they can. And the best advice I can give them is shoot for the middle of the goal. Not the middle of the goal, but mid-goal on, right. the, on the sides. And nine times out of ten, oh, here's a chance. It's a goal. Oh. It's a goal. 1-0 UBC through his legs to deal with that, but he's caught moving. And it's gone through his legs. I just passed him and into the net. So good goal for UBC. They've rolled it in. He's, he did well. hit the target. So 1-0. Now it's game on. Yeah, it's like we talked about. You just got to give yourself a chance and put it on target. Can't waste those opportunities. And came out of nowhere. Cole just had to get that one touch on it. He made the most of it, picking his spot. Cascades with a lot of work to do now. Can they get something back right away? Well, there needs to be a reaction. There has to be a reaction right away. If they can get it back, they're back in the game. Donald plays a nice ball back and work towards the middle. Certainly the Cascades coming up with a lot of gusto after getting scored on, but going to have to be a little more precise picking out that final pass if they want to equalize this game. Elbow coming up from, from Nikogi there. Referee says play on. Cascades finally win it back. Great touch there to keep possession for the Cascades. That's better. Parfait finds an open man and a little bit of space down that far side now. Working towards the middle. Great job to create a little space. Was he going to have a go? Can't quite find the space for it. A little too big of a touch. Needed that touch though to get free. Well played by UBC and they're going to win the ball back here on a pass out of the out it's, of the Cascades reach. It's just, but try and build up so you're getting crosses and getting down the line in dangerous position. Getting crosses in the box causing problems. Well, right after getting scored on, it was Donald that was leading the heavy attack forward here. You figure he'll be their emotional leader if they are going to find a way to tie that, this thing up. That's the best chance they've had, UBC, and they've taken advantage of it. It was a good goal. He took it really well. But they haven't created a great deal of chances up to now in this game, up front, to cause some damage. Yeah, there has been moments in this game where it feels like those talented players for UBC might break through, but... UFV stood tall at the back, so you're right. If they are pressing forward here now, there's going to be those holes, and we'll see if UBC can exploit those holes before the Cascades are able to get one themselves. Uh, some silly fouls going in now, and they've got to be... City both benches were very loud and in the action. A little bit 
dead here now since the UBC goal. That ball played in a danger area and bouncing around has a hit from the top of the 18 but can't get anything on it. Goalkeeper a little bit fortunate there. He's come out painting the sky for me. He's got to, if you're coming out there, you've really got to get a piece of it and make it count. I think he was, uh, I've always told goalkeeper, if in doubt, stay home, you know, and you've got a chance to save it on the line. Parfait with a good turn and he's dragged down by the defender. Referee's going to have to get a pencil sharpener for his pocket as well. He's got many cards he's had to write out. They're certainly making him work tonight. That ball played into the UBC box and headed out. No cascades in the area, but they do gain possession. Quick little one-two and a chance now. Can he get on the end of it? Cuts back to the middle. Shot. Well defended by UBC as he cut back to the middle, which he had to do to get space for the shot. The UBC defenders converged and didn't allow him to get anything towards goal. Corner from it, so you've got something out of it. But well done. Good defending as well from UBC. Didn't dive in. Stayed in his feet. The end swinging corner. Doesn't find a white head. Ah, it's got to be better than that. It's got to be on target, that. I mean, if you need to, take a touch. But they either go in the top corner or they handle themselves very well. It's uh, quite competitive. We've and had a goal in the game and uh, still a bit of time to go yet. Nearly half an hour to go. And just moments after we said like it seemed a little bit dead on the pitch we have a big scuffle and the energy certainly right back up in the stadium thunderbirds with a one nil lead will they sit back or will they attack looking for one more cascade step up and they may be on the counter attack here switching up the field referee says nothing there Players are a bit of an interesting uh Well, the goalkeeper uh, is on Johnny there. Walkabout there. He's like Crocodile yeah. Dundee on Walkabout. He, he's, he's coming out of his box. He's got to be really careful. If you're going to come out that far, you've got to make sure you keep possession or you get it played in behind there. But the ball he played wide wasn't a great ball for the foot, for the winger to get on. Well, just before that shot from Nkogi from far out, I was about to say the player going down easily there might be not a bad idea to try and tempt the referee in this moment, having there being so many players sitting on a yellow. Ball played oh, into the middle. Well. Good he's little turn. Well. And a good fake. Can he stay on his feet? Ooh, Boy, that, that was awfully close. That was. I mean, the slippery again. It looks like it's a bit slick. Probably got the wrong footwear on. But uh, I think that's a bit of a dangerous tackle to try and roll over. Yeah. And referees Made close enough this back good. four for me screwing studs used to be a hundred dollar fine when i was coaching if you didn't have screwing studs at the back oh wow these days they wear all these slippers and stroll about like they're ronaldo but they're not the defenders bit of a wasted possession there as he had some time but gives the ball back to ubc can they find something on the attack now and kogi breaks to the middle Bit of a tackle there. Clean, the referee says. Parfait coming with it the other way. Slows it up and plays it back. Using the whole field now are the Cascades. Trying to work something towards the middle. Good ball played to the back post. In alone. A deflection. Or no, no deflection, says the referee. And no. it's actually the a good probably the right decision to try and take the ball down. Had he found a way to hit that one first time, it would have been quite the world-class hit. But just the touch just letting him down a little bit. Yeah, touch like a blacksmith, as Tony Waiters used to say. <laughs> or a touch like a trampoline. But encouraging play from UFV, getting those chances forward. UBC hasn't had any a while, and they give possession away again there. Tackle from the back, but that's a foul in my eyes. But carry on, referee. Yeah, that seemed to be right at the back, but I guess he came around and somehow found the ball. UBC with a great chance here coming into the 18. Has a hit. Not too much danger in the end of the day. Didn't get all he wanted to on that one. They look just a little bit quicker, UBC, in this half. They've stepped up their game a little bit and put a bit more effort into it. Yeah, they're certainly patient. They wait for their opportunities and they are very quick going forward when they do decide to try and take advantage. Could the break be on for the Cascades now? It's Looking a for ball, a ball over the very top. Very good ball. It's in a great spot. 
little bit of chance now here to move forward and get something in. Couple moves, cut to the inside, a shot. No, he passes off. Thought he was going to have a go with his left foot in the end. It's over the net. Again, creating chances there. That's obviously better play, and they've, they've, they've got some on. And even the second shot, he's not really caught it well. Had a second bait in it and knocked it over the ball. But good that they're creating chances. It's, that's what they need. And it all come from David Parford playing a lovely ball wide to create that space on the wing to get a decent ball into the box. Yeah, Parfait, I really liked his vision tonight using the whole field, picking out his passes. I'm surprised to see him play. I sat with him at the Trinity game uh, last week and he was injured with a pulled muscle. And uh, I thought he would be out for a couple of weeks, but must have a good physio at UFV because he's, he's up and fit and done very well tonight. Yeah, certainly not showing any signs of being in too much pain out here. That's good play. Choi beats his man with a slick little move. Works it to the inside. Bit of a wasted ball there in the end, but the Cascades do retain possession. Quick little move to the inside and it just too many men to beat in the end. It needs a shot there. They're trying to walk it in. They need to get some shots and get the goalkeeper some work. But certainly a lot better effort and... Uh, Opportunity now on the far post, in with the left. UBC just blocking everything, nothing making it to the net. Donald gets possession back for the Cascades, looking to pick out a pass. What UBC have done really well is block shots and crosses. And to me, the fullback's job is to block crosses. The centre-back's job is to block shots and stop shots and protect the goalkeeper. And for the most part, UBC have done a fabulous job at that tonight. Every chance they've had to shoot you in. Notices a little bit of room for Parfait in the middle. Can he get some space for a shot? Now ends up losing possession. Had UBC players all around him and actually ends up committing a foul. That's number 15, Sam Fletcher. Yep. A little bit of pressure on here. Keeper had to do well to get that out of harm's way. And the keeper's done very well. He's read the situation well. And a good ball in behind and a good run on to get on the end of it to stay on side as well. But the keeper's done a great job there. You have, have done well pushing on here and looking for the equaliser. Donald showing some pace. The captain trying to will his team back into this one. Wins his team Ooh, a throw three. in. No, he doesn't. Ended up just off his foot in the end. Just past 70 minutes played here from Rotary Stadium this evening. You're tuned in to Candle West TV presented by Co-op. Another great evening, beautiful evening for a great game. What more do we have in store for us here in the final 20 or so? Can the Cascades muster up a tying goal? They get possession and have a little bit of room down this near side. Decides to turn it back as UBC retreated. Donald up the right wing to Choi. Could certainly hear the contact there. Actually a bit naughty that one. Have to try and find that awkward spot where the goalie can't quite get to it. What does Parfait have in store here? Good ball to the back post. Can someone get up? They can, but yeah, decent over effort. in the end. I thought the ball was a little bit lofted and the, the, for me the lot and less more speed and less height. I think that's an attacker's ball where they can just get a touch on it. They don't need to get any power, just a flick because it's coming in quick. Right. But that was a little bit too high and a bit floaty for me. Yeah, certainly a lot more time to think for the Thunderbirds defenders get in position. It's actually a good game. Cascades, nobody wanted to make a run there as they realized they were in an offside position. I think he was, yeah. He's come back at an offside position and that's where the defender, the centre-back, has to be a little step. I think... Mike Bosch has probably had a few uh, words of wisdom at halftime and set them on the right track here. But, um, but both teams, actually, in fairness, Tom as well, he, his players have certainly given a lot more than they did in the first half. But uh, it's turning into a good game. Another player down injured. My goodness. What's the referee giving here? Drop ball, giving it to UFV. No foul in, involved, so drop ball it is. Good call by there, there by the referee. Choi down the sideline, thinks about making a man miss, but plays it back to Donald. Donald using some space and 
Ooh, forced into a bit of a tricky play there. That's got to be a better ball. Nice and crisp. It's took too long to get there. It gives the defenders time to come at you. Neat little flick on, but no cascade player was ready on the other end. Again, a lot of flicks and little flicks and tricks from the strikers and the good strikers will hold the ball up and let the midfield players come and support and keep possession. Flicks it okay. The work now and again, everybody thinks it's wonderful, but a good striker really holds the ball up. There's another player down. My goodness, they're dropping like flies here. They certainly are. I didn't quite see it. Stop the bleeding and get that covered up. Looks like it might just be around his eye, forehead mm. area kind of there. Yeah, he's obviously trying to stop the blood. Bit of Vaseline on there. Keep it going. Get him back in. No substitution, though, as he'll try and get back into action as quickly as possible. Cascades unable to keep possession. Can the Thunderbirds grab it? No, they can't. Another ball over the top, just hoping for something. Yeah, there's some Hail Marys over the top. They've got to be, again, a little bit more precise and try and get in at the striker's feet to hold it and keep possession and get other people involved. But it's easy from here. But uh, the ball over the top's a difficult one. Parfit with a chance and a poor touch. Yeah, the and ball. And that's a foul. He could be off here, you know. He's, yeah, he certainly he's could. He's been booked before, has he? It was David Border this season, isn't yeah, he? He scored against right. Trinity, but uh, he's a good athlete as well and a lot of height. They need to get the ball wide, get some crosses in and look for the big lad Richardson up front because he could cause some damage. Yeah, and like you mentioned, the only one to find the net for the Cascade so far this season. Can they rely on him once again? Oh, again, a slip there. It seems like the majority of the slips are going on on that side of the pitch too, doesn't it? That's going to Thunderbirds player was running. Oh, it is going to be Thunderbirds ball. Cascades player just going to grab it, making sure UBC is not doing any time wasting here in the closing moments. As we have likely, well, just under 10 minutes of regulation time, but we've had plenty of stoppages here. I'm sure we're in for at least three that we saw in the first half, probably a little bit more. Regardless, closing in on the final portion of this game. Players squawking back and forth on whose that is, and the Cascades win the battle. Can they maintain anything here going up the field? Yeah, and these last 10 minutes are going to be critical for UFV. Competed very well, and they've scored flat at Trinity. So they've, they've got something going here. They're, they're a good little side, but um, you've got to find a way to win. You know, it's, it's all right playing well, but you have to win. And UBC, who've competed very well, have found that way to get the goal. It's a huge difference. Chance here in the middle. He cuts to the inside. Does he find any room? Ball still bouncing around. Comes free with it. And a shot, good stop to get just the tip on it by Well, that's keeper. good play to get the shot away. He's had it a was. Th Not out of danger yet. As the in-swinging corner comes in. Play to the back post. Nikogi got up in a deflection. Well done by the Cascades to keep that one out of the danger. A little bit fortunate there. I thought the keeper could have held that. He's uh, pushed it back into danger there. But the defenders have done well to uh, deal with it and get it away from danger. But the keeper, to me, has got to hold that. It's a simple, you know, routine save for him. Yeah, the initial Having ball. said that, he's just kept him from scoring. Yeah, that's so right. he's done well. But if, if he just catches that, it diffuses the whole yeah. problem. Get organized again, get him out. Yeah. But they've got away with one there. Yeah, he, he had a chance to grab it. It was well done by the defender to not let the dangerous Nakogi get too solid of a header through the ball, kind of leaning back. UBC pushing out well there and playing off. There's three players offside there that if they'd gone through for the ball. Was Nikogi on? Flag stays down and a little bit of running with the keeper, but nothing there. He's calling offside. He's got his flag up. He's waving his flag there. I don't know what that's about. This is UBC in a nutshell, though, the... They've, they've not really been wonderful tonight. They've not played really well, but they find a way to win. They find a way to score goals, you know, and uh, that's a sign of a good team. 
but I think UAV have been a good good opponent tonight. Not over yet. They could. You never know. They could come back in this. But uh, it's been a terrific game. Parfit looks comfortable on the ball. He doesn't panic, does he? He seems to get a hold of it. He's aware of his surroundings. He's he's not in a panic anyway. He looks always comfortable when he's on the ball. Yeah, Parfit's looked very comfortable this evening. Good little flick on. And could the Cascades have something here? Ball played to the middle. Top of the box, a hit. Not able to get his body through that one was Troy. And again, he's not really caught it well. It's a difficult ball, that. It's coming in. Deflection. Wasn't a direct pass out to him, so... He wasn't quite ready for it. Leaned back on his back foot a little bit as the ball deflected towards him. Tough situation, but... Just a little bit of lack of quality. It's easy to say that up here, but, you know, the, the quality players will get a good contact on that and they'll watch the ball onto their foot and make it count. Ah, good defending. Absolutely. Very well defended there by Donald, covering all parts of that back line. Uh, he's a good player. He's a very good player. He's a, he's a senior player. He's his fifth year. And, a lot of experience, but he looks sharp. He's, he's good on the ball. His passing's good. He reads the game well. He gets in good positions. I think he's a very good player. Well, the Cascades follow in along the captains. They've got to intensity. gamble a bit here, though. They have to take chances, and it could end up 2-0 by doing that, but they have to go for it. They've got to push on, push more players forward and take chances and get the ball into dangerous positions. Yeah, they certainly need to give themselves a chance. It's no difference if you lose 1-0 or 2-0. That's a foul. See that coming. Referee blend and solid and see it through. Also looks like on that last booking, there was a substitution that went down as well. I think Spies headed to the bench for an attacking player. Well, that'll make both coaches look at what, what they've got on the field and who has been booked and they may make changes according to that so that they don't get somebody sent off good touch there by the forward that we've been looking for all night to just keep that possession can they move something forward foul. here now that's a foul surely yes be anthony vega lining up for this free kick as we finally get going here now vega has a goal. It's a curler um, in. He makes the goal. He makes the stop. But and the goalkeeper's done very well. Good save. That, that looks easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. That's a good save from the goalkeeper. He's positioned himself very well. But a good shot as well. I mean, that's, that's exactly what I was saying. You hit a skip one. You can get a little bit either side of him, even better. But a fairly decent strike. UBC wasting a little bit of time as they try and bleed this clock out in the final moments of regulation, but... Certainly a few minutes to be added in this exciting second half. Great job by Donald to jump in front oh, of that one. Oh, ball. Yeah. boy. Really. Got the 45 minutes up for the second half. I don't know how long they're going to play injury time. No, if they did announce it over the intercom, we just missed it as we were chatting there. But... Certainly more, I would think, than we had in the first half. Probably four or five minutes based on the stoppages that we saw. Donald with an aggressive header through. And it's a chance now for Choi. Plays a good ball down the outside. Can Richardson get in? Tries to cut to the middle. Makes a move to the outside. Towards the middle. Unable to get that final ball to a white jersey. Unfortunate. And UBC now. Oh, oh that's boy, that's tackle. an ugly tackle. That's a bad tackle. That's a really bad decision there by what's happened with the clock and all that time but probably a few minutes here to go can't be long however much it is cascades need to push and they need to push now gonna have to work to get possession back as the thunderbirds unable to keep it lucky here for the cascades and it's now or never time to push something upfield Cascades begin to work it upfield. They need something now. They won't score going back there. No. They're not. Knowing they have a couple minutes, still not pressing to go completely upfield. Still thinking about making the right pass. But boy, you've got to get aggressive now. Great little flick played on. And smart by Nkoge to play that back and. Get a little more time for his team. 
Well won by Parfait there. Richardson with it on the wing. Plays it off of the defender. Cascades looking to push it upfield now. Or will they once again not grab points from a, a game where they really put in a good effort and probably deserve some points? Yeah, sometimes the game's cruel. You don't get what you deserve. Um, but again, UBC uh, quite often find ways to win, even when they don't play as well as they do other games, you know, but they always find a way to win. Great uh, shoulder there by Richard into knocking Koge off the ball and playing one over the top. Makes the defenders turn their back and put a little pressure on, but the ball's just a little bit too far in the end. Great job by Richardson to knock a strong and Koge off the ball there and push it upfield, but... Cascade in an offside position. They're not able to take the ball. But now, oh, tough. Referee's going to say that Choi. Been chances both ends. Um, a lot of, you know, clumsy tackles, as I say, and what have you. But it's, it's been an entertaining game. Richardson turns it over. Cascades have to get it back upfield. Can they gain any possession? Good tackle there to try and win it back, but... Poor touch, though, to give it away. Yeah. He's got to hold that and keep possession, and here we go again. We <laughs> <A bit of> a... <laughs> and once again, it's guess who...